Last video, we looked at four note closed position horn voicings where all the notes are voiced within an octave and they're voiced with the closest chord tone above or below. In this video, we're going to look at what's called drop two voicings, and it's a more open voicing in that it's spread out further than one octave, and there are larger intervals between the different horns that are played, and there's the chord tone that's skipped between them. And the way it works is it's like closed position, but you take the second note from the top and you drop it down an octave. So let's look at what that looks like. Let's take, for example, C major 7 chord from the top down. I've got a root position there, B, G, E, C. So if I drop that G down an octave, it's a more open voicing. And this will work in all the inversions. Let's say I start like this. G, E, C, B. And I drop that E down an octave. Then I get... So very colorful and interesting voicing. Let's say I start with the fifth on top, or the third on top. I get that nice crush in the middle. But again, I can drop the second note from the top down an octave. That's C, and that'll give me... So those are really nice open voicings. Now, if we have the root on top, that doesn't work as well. There's one general principle we want to keep in mind. You want to avoid having an interval of a minor ninth within a chord, unless it's between the root and the flat ninth on a dominant seven flat nine chord. So in this example for the C major seven, if we have the root on top, that doesn't work to start with because we have an interval of a semitone between the top two voices, which isn't great. But if we drop that second note down, we get, and that's not very nice. We have that B to the C on top. So you want to try and stay away from voicings like this. So drop two works in all the inversions and all the qualities of chords. And let's look at it in our examples that we've been using. So in this first example, we have the A minor nine chord with the B on top, and that G is now transposed down an octave, and it's down here. The next chord, the D minor nine, underneath the E, we would have the C, but that's dropped an octave, and it's all the way down here. So let's listen to what this sounds like. So, very interesting open quality to it. Let's listen to them in solo for a moment. So, it's a nice distinctive sound to get used to hearing. Now, let's look at the next example. And I'm using, again, typical instrumentation, trumpet, alto, tenor, and then trombone. So, here we have that long B-flat sustain chord, that B-flat 7. And I have the C on top, the ninth, and instead of going to the A flat, I now go to the F. So again, it's a wide open voicing with an interval of a fifth on top. So that's the characteristic of this type of voicing is that wide sound. Here's the next example, and I'm using Session Horns Pro here. So I have the trumpet, alto, tenor, and trombone, and I've taken the second line and dropped it down an octave. And let's look at this one. Here we've got the A minor 7 with the 7th on top. So for the G, instead of going to the E, I'm jumping to the C. And then I have the A over there and the E over there. So wide intervals on the top and the bottom with a close interval in the middle. So I find that on long chords like this at slower tempos, these wider voicings work nicely. And let's move on to the next example over here. And back to our regular brass, same thing, I've dropped the top line down an octave. 
Here I'm using the trumpet, alto, tenor, and trombone. And here we have the D minor 7 with the 7th on top. So instead of having the A underneath that, I jump to the F. And then I have the D over there and then the A over there. So the wide intervals on the top and bottom and a little bit closer in the middle there. So they're fairly high in the register, but they're still drop two voicings. Now let's look at the next example. And here I'm using alto, flugelhorn, trombone, and baritone sax. So a bit of a lower range instrumentation and a bit of a warmer sound. And again, I've taken the second line and dropped it down an octave and given it to the baritone sax here. So here I have this unison line here. And on the A minor seven, we have the third on the top. So Again, we're jumping down, skipping over the next chord tone and going to the G. So we have an interval of a fourth there, then a close interval there, and then a wider interval there. And here I've dropped the baritone sax down another octave. So it's a very distinctive sound in this lower register when it's being doubled with the other instruments. So sounds interesting. Let's listen to that on its own. You can hear the lower range baritone. So it jumps up. It jumps up for the notes that are harmonized, but in the unison octave line, it's down an octave. So let's look at the next example. And here I've got trumpet, alto, trombone, and baritone sax. And here we've got this triad voicing. So there's no extensions, and I'm starting on the fifth. So we got big intervals here. We got the F down to the B flat and then down to D there. That's a minor sixth. And then down to the F here. So very wide voicings. And the next example. We're triads again. Here I'm using Session Horns Pro, and I'm going trumpet, tenor, trombone, and baritone sax. And here we have triads again, voice slow. And here I have the fifth on top. So let's say, for example, on the C, I have C then, or G rather, then all the way down to C. And then I have the G double there and the E all the way down low. So nice darker kind of register. So interesting, open, kind of dark range voicing. Let's go to the next example. And here I've got a new example that I've done up. And this is basically a 2-5-1 progression. And I want to show you some kind of voice leading and the way this works moving from close position to drop two so you can hear them back to back. So I'm going to use trumpet, tenor, trombone, and baritone sax. And let's look at this and listen to this first in regular closed position, and then we'll listen to the exact same thing in drop two position. So I'm going through the cycle of fourths here, going down a tone each time. So E minor seven, I'm starting with the fifth on top. And again, this is closed position, so I'm just voicing all the way down. Then the A7, I have the G on top, D major seven, I have the A. So we're just doing some voice leading for lines that flow nicely. Then I'm going to D minor seven, and again, just doing some voice leading, D minor seven, G, C, C minor seven, F, B flat, etc. So let's start by listening to this in close position.
So cycle of fourths, close position, a nice tight sound. And now let's listen to the exact same thing in the drop two position voicings. So I think hearing them back to back like that really illustrates the different quality between that tight close voicing and the more open drop two position. We'll continue with more in the next video.